Welcome. In this session, we will learn how to write discrete time transfer functions in MATLAB. So let's start. Now, we know if we have a transfer function like h of v, r, we transfer function. So suppose the transfer function is that divided by Plus four, we can also write it like this. So these two are one. So how do you write this transfer function in MATLAB? Now we say, suppose we name this transfer function as S Y S of F. So the function is same. That is used for continuous time system. Then we mention the coefficients of this numerator and denominator. And here is the one more term that's extra as compared to the yes, continuous time term. And this TS is the sampling time. This TS mentioned sampling time. So to illustrate this, let me switch back to MATLAB to show you how do we create this. In MATLAB. So let's start. So we say SYS is the transfer function. We say 1, P5, 1, 5, 4. And if I say the sampling rate is 1, minus, sorry, sampling time is 1, minus sample time is 1, this will give me the transfer function in Z domain. So this is the transfer function in Z domain. Same way, one more example, you can say the transfer function is, let's suppose, let's take an example, one minus one, one minus 1.85, and let's suppose the sampling rate is 0.1. So you can check, this gives us another transfer function like this what a sampling rate, sampling time is 0.1. So this is a discrete transfer function. Okay, all right. Now you can calculate the step response, impulse response of this. For example, if I say step system one, this will give me the step response of this. And I say we don't. This will, now uh, to see this, let me switch to the figure window. This is the step response of this system. All right. Uh, an illustration between this. Let me make an integrator in MATLAB. Let's make an integrator or summer in MATLAB. So eight times summer. So let's call it system two and the transfer function is one comma one comma minus one. Now let me take a sampling time of one. So this, uh, I'm saying this is a summer. I'm sorry, this is not a summer. One plus zero. This will be a summer in this now This is the integrator that we say in continuous time. Now, if I say the step response of this, SYS2, but I will check the step response only up to time t equal to. Now see the sampling rate is one. So the sam uh, sorry, sampling time is one. Means this will, the step will increase only when the time goes from one to two, two to three, the step will is like this. So let me see the step response. Why is this taking time? Why is this taking time? And let me show you the figure window. Let me, so this is the step. You can see when, when t equal to, let me make it where, when t equal to one, this makes a step of one. Then at t equal to, it makes a step of two, then three. So this is the step response. See, what is, the, what is going on here? The input to the system is 
uh, step. Step means one, means the input to the system that you apply at t equals zero is one. Now this makes a step at this, uh, this n equal to zero and that's equal to one. Now let me illustrate this on the, that. This is a summer, this is indeed a summer. Let me show you this. Now the transfer function of this is, see the transfer function of this is, All right, so we can also write it actually dividing numerator and denominator. This is the transfer function. Now, transfer function is written as output. So, this is inverse. Now, taking the inverse Z transform. So we just applying this stuff. So what is the Laplace trans in inverse Z transform of this Y of Z? This will be simply y of what will be inverse Z transform of this? This will be simply Y of N minus because it's multiplied by Z so minus one. So this will be now you can see Y of N Now, I'm saying my input is step. That's meaning of the step plus one. My input is step. So my input is always equal to one. So my input is one. At n equal to one, n equal to zero, I apply one at uh, at So my input is one. Now, what will be my output? So let's start with n equal to zero point one. n is equal to zero. This will be x of zero and y of zero minus this is the initial condition. Let's assume that's equal to zero. Now, what's x of zero? X of zero is one. Equal to zero equal to one. Same way. Now, when n is equal to one, you can say this is y of one. Y of one is x of one plus y of one minus one. One minus one is zero. So this is x of one is one. Y of zero we calculate from here is one. So when n is equal to one, the y of one is two. So when n is equal to two, this will be x of two, y. You can see x of two is one. This is uh, this is two. So this will be three. So on. So if you continue this, it is actually summing the previous value of y with the current value of this input signal. That's what is happening here. Now if I switch back to this figure window you can see this is indeed doing the summing operation. At n equal to zero, the value of this is zero. At n equal to one, the value is two. At n equal to two, the value is three. At n equal to three, the value is four and so on. This is how you compute this, uh, how you make an summer or integrator in discrete time. This is the same as one by s in discrete, in continuous time r. This is same as uh, one by one, z by z minus one is same as a summer in in discrete time. I hope this is clear. Let me switch back to MATLAB. Now to illustrate the concept of the sampling time. Sam sampling time, let me change the sampling time to 0.1. So this is the same, uh, this summer, but now the sampling time is 0.1. Now if I say step SYS2, now let's say I want to check it only up to time equal to, you can see, just let me switch the screen. Illustrate this. See, this is indeed the same. Now, this time the, st the step occurs at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 points. So the sampling time is now at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 points. Uh, this is very, very important illustration. What is the meaning of actually step time? Step time is now the step will occur after 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Same way you can change the sampling time to 0 0.01 or 0 0.001. This is how you illustrate this sampling time. I hope this is clear. So this is how to make a summary uh, discrete time or integrate in discrete time. Now, so next you can do the step response of this, impulse response of this. If I say impulse of system two, and you can see it would give me the same 
and the output should be step output should be step let me show you yes this is step but this time the uh, value is 10 why is the value 10 because the sampling rate is 0.1 now it should let me show because the sampling time sorry sampling time is and let me show you the illustration that if i change this and then if i say impulse you can see this now this will give you the unit step where the amplitude is equal to one that's why uh, what's the significance of this uh, sampling and this is the significance of the sampling time next so this is how you create a discrete time transfer function in matlab or simply transfer function in z domain now if i have a continuous time system how do i convert to a discrete time system how do I convert that to a discrete time system? MATLAB has an inbuilt function to do that. That's called C2D. C2D means convert continuous time to discrete time. So convert this, this continuous time to discrete time. Now, if I type help C2D, this will give me the information about this function. That is the continuous time to discrete time. Now you can see uh, the arguments of this are listed here. You can see the argument. S Y S C means that is discarded by the continuous time transfer function. T S means the sampling rate. What is the sampling rate used? And this is the method. This is very, very important. Now, the mathematically, how you convert a, a continuous time yeah, the signal to a discrete time, we use the sampling term. That's what we do. But uh, there are several methods in MATLAB that you can use to convert any any continuous time system to a discrete time for example zero out of hold this is the very popular in electronics and this is actually the practically implementable one this is what electronic circuits do. this impulse method is the same as multiplying the input continuous time signal by an in by a train of impulse this is how we prove the sampling term and this is what we shall use once we discuss sampling theorem now there are other methods also as well that's Tustin method least square approach and so on so how do we convert a continuous time system or a continuous time transfer function to a discrete time system? The transfer function is C to D, and we write the arguments are like this. TS is the sampling time method is the which method are you using to, for converting this continuous time to a discrete time system? All right, let me give you, let me illustrate this. Let's start with the same. Let's start with SYC, C means continuous time system. Well, let me simply say C. C is the name of this transfer function. And let's suppose sorry, this should not be. Let me give you the illustration with integrator symbol. So this is one bias. So this is my continuous time system or simply an integrator here. Now if I convert it into a discrete time, let's call it D. So if I say C to D. Now, name of my system is C. Uh, sampling time, I'll keep one for time being. And the method, method I will write impulse. Method I will write as impulse method. Now, if, we use, if I type the enter, you'll see this is indeed that integrator that I proved that this is an integrator or summer in discrete time. This is indeed. A, now, if you see the step response of this, if you see the step response of this D, and say up to time t equal to 10. And let me enter. And if I type zero, you can see this is the step response. And indeed, this is doing the summing operation or integrating operation. So, this is how you convert a continuous time system to a discrete time system in MATLAB directly. You don't have to do anything. You have to just write C to D, then the transfer function name, and mention the sampling rate of which sampling rate are you using and then the method you are using to convert this let me give you one more example to illustrate this let's take one more example let's suppose system continuous time is c let's suppose this is one and let's suppose options are one five thirty so this is my system in continuous time. All right, so now to convert it into a discrete time, I'll say this D is C to D. And then I will say 
S Y S C, and let's suppose the sampling time is this time point one, and then I can mention the method. Let's use custom this time. This is also called bilinear transformation in discrete time. So this is my discrete time system. This is my discrete time system. Now if I see the step response of this, if I see the step response of If I see the step response of this as a step, this B, and if I type enter, you can check this is the step response of my system. Now, why are there these peaks like this? Because I have chosen the sampling rate to be one. That's why. Now, if I change the sampling rate, let me illustrate this again. Now, if I change the sampling rate, let me change it to 0 0.01 first. Then if I press this and let me press it on also. So this becomes smoother. Now this becomes smoother. Now if you further in this decrease the sampling time, let me show you the example. This is my sampling time. Now have this and I'll type grid on also. So let me show you this. You can see the step response looks better. It looks exactly like that continuous time. So this is how you convert a continuous time system to a discrete time system. And in short, how you this, uh, this write the discrete time transfer function in MATLAB means the transfer function of a discrete time system. Now, same way you can use the other function means PZ map. If I say PZ map system D, this will give me the pole zero location of this system. And you can check the poles and zeros of this system are that one is at, at the end means at minus one, another pole is at one. You can check, right? So the pole, there are actually two poles here. There are actually two poles here, right? So the pole is and zeros of this system. Now, what is this circle? This is the unit circle. This is used for stability analysis. You know it from Z transform. This is that unit circle. This circle is the, that unit circle. So MATLAB also mentions you with this, whether the system will be stable or not. We know the poles must be inside the unit circle for discrete time of the system to win. So this is how we write the transfer function in discrete time in MATLAB. I hope it's clear. Try the examples yourself and check it yourself how to get different responses, impulse response, step response, this pole zero map, next plot and other plots in MATLAB and how to convert a continuous time system to a discrete time system. Try different, uh, this, see I have shown you just few. You can say the method I'm using is impulse now and see what's the difference in transfer function. So this is the transfer function here and this is the transfer function here. Now, uh, so this is how we write, uh, how you convert a continuous time system to discrete time system. Now, again, if you check the, sorry, not pole zero map, but the step response of this. Let me check the step response of this. So the step response will almost be the same. Step response is same. It, the, the method didn't change the step response of this discrete time system. Please check it yourself, check, try the further examples yourself that will help you. Okay, this is very, very important for control system analysis or if you are designing a filter, this is very, very important for that analysis. Please try the examples yourself. All right, let me stop here.